Well, <clears throat> we've uh, we had a little break last week when uh, Jim du- Jim Duval was here and shared a story with us, and um, the week before we had our annual meeting, and so we were giving thanks to to God for what He's been doing in our midst this past year. But for a couple of weeks prior to that. Uh, we were, I was preaching through a series called From Here to There. And I want to kind of bring that series to a conclusion this week. So often in life where we see where we are and we know where we want to be and we think, how do I get from here to there? And just to give you a little insight into to next week's direction, Next week is Easter Sunday, so next week we'll be talking about this amazing thing where instead of talking about how do we get from here to there, we recognize that in Jesus, God came from there to here. And so the next series will be from there to here, but, but we need to wrap this up. How do we get from where we see ourselves to where we need to get to? And kind of the theme for today is, well, what about when we're facing challenges? What about when we are struck and and facing pain? How do we get from pain to triumph? Jesus once said, I have told you all this so that in me, so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. The truth is, we live in a broken, sin-scarred world. We do live in a world where bad things happen to good people. We find ourselves clothed in these earthly bodies that, quite honestly, have a pretty short lifespan. When I used to work in the grocery store, we'd have to check the dates on things because things would go out of date. And you know what? These bodies have a shelf life. They're designed to last so long. I remember there was a song I liked, and they had a a lyric in the song that said, I'm looking down this road to glory in a car designed to fail. You ever feel like that sometimes? Yeah. In life, we will face pain. We will face heartaches. And in the midst of that, so often we see where we are, and we don't know how to get from here to there from tragedy to triumph, from pain to freedom. We don't know how to get from sorrow to victory. And the truth is this portion of life may be temporary, but God is preparing us for all of eternity. Our scripture this morning is found in in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet many years ago and This passage of scripture is written to a people living in exile. Israel had been destroyed. The people had been led into captivity. We too are a people in exile. Created for a heavenly relationship with God. And yet separated from him by by our own sin. We are, because of of sin, we are exiled to a broken and painful world of our own, meaning the human race's own, making. The sin of the entire human race is added up to this world we live in. And we too have contributed to that. But I have good news. We have hope in Jesus, the Messiah, who has come to set us free. The Redeemer has come to return what has been lost. The world around us may still be fallen, but we can live victorious, victoriously within it. Christ did not set us free to be victims. He set us free to be overcomers, that we might overcome the struggles of this world. The Apostle Paul in Romans 8.37 proclaims, Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In the midst of tragedy, broken hearts, broken people, in the midst of it all, we are not alone. Jesus is here now to help us to get through all the muck that this world will throw our way. Until we get to that day, he will be at work in our lives until we get to that day where we're like Job of long ago said, I shall see my Redeemer with my own eyes. How my heart yearns within me. So despite the adversity we face, we gather here this morning and we seek God's strength and God's grace and God's care. And we worship him. And we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 50, beginning in verse 4. Words to those in exile. The sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom so that I know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning, he awakens me and opens my understanding to his will. The sovereign Lord has spoken to me and I have listened. I have not rebelled or turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me and my cheek to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mockery and spitting because the sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone determined to do his will. And I know that I will not be put to shame. He who gives me justice is near. Who will dare to bring charges against me now? Where are my accusers? Let them appear. See, The sovereign Lord is on my side. Who will declare me guilty? All my enemies will be destroyed like old clothes that have been eaten by moss. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys his servants? If you are walking in darkness without a ray of light, trust in the Lord and rely on God. But watch out, you who live in your own light. Think about that, that last sentence for a minute. Watch out, you who live in your own light. You ever forget to seek God's help and just try to live in your own life? To try to get through struggles in your own life? So many people in this world are trying to go through these insurmountable challenges in their own light, when God is right there to be on their side. Watch out, you who live in your own light. Here's a news flash. Trying to walk in our own light is what got us in this mess, is what got the human race in this mess to begin with. We look back to, to Adam and Eve. We, we read about how they were in the Garden of Eden and And yeah, the the devil came and tempted them, but they could have simply asked God what to do. They could have been obedient to what God had already told them to do. But they decided to rely on their own wisdom. And in their own light, they disobeyed God. And for the first time, sin entered God's creation. And ever since then, pretty much every Sin that has weighed upon this broken world has come from somebody walking in their own light, doing what they want instead of what God wants, doing what they think is best instead of what God thinks is best, just allowing their their emotions or their impulses to run rampant instead of seeking God's light. 
Why do we try to do it on our own? Why do, why do we try to walk through this life on our own when our creator is right there? God is here to help and we must learn to lean on him. In Psalm 46, it says that God is our refuge. It says God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. In our passage we just read in Isaiah, if we look at verse, verses 4 and 5, it says, The sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom so that I know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning, he awakens me and opens my understanding to his will. The sovereign Lord has spoken to me and I have listened. I have not rebelled and turned away. Boy, that's a profound thing to be able to say. Not only did God speak to me, but I have listened. I have not rebelled. I have not turned away from him. Don't you want to be able to say that this morning? The, uh, the prophet shares his wisdom for comforting the weary. Each morning God awakens me. Each day must start with seeking him. Each day must start with trusting him and not ourselves. Seeking his will and trusting that he will lead us. That he will speak to us. That he will guide us. And then that next line from Isaiah is so extraordinary. Listen. Not only seek God, but when you do sense what God is telling you to do, listen. Don't rebel. Don't turn away from God. Be obedient. Remember, this is God Almighty. This is the one who laid down his life on the cross because he loves us. Jesus, King of all creation. It's Palm Sunday and we remember Jesus, the King of all creation, riding into Jerusalem on the colt of a donkey. A man full of grace and love and humility who is sacrificing his life for our sins. This Jesus. He shared in our suffering. He became a part of this broken down sinful world where there is pain and sorrow and hurt and he entered into it willingly he became flesh and blood and dwelt among us so that he could be the once and for all sacrifice for our world of pain he shared in our suffering he gets it he understands He says, you don't have to do this on your own. You don't have to walk in your own light. You can seek him in his light. We don't have to walk through these things in our own strength. We can lean on him and he will give us strength. Look at verse six. This was written hundreds of years before Jesus went to the cross, and yet it's, it's so easy to see Jesus in this passage of Scripture saying, I offered my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mockery and spitting. This is Jesus. God become flesh, fully God and fully man. And he shares in our sufferings. And yet in the midst of it, he is our hope. He is our strength. He is our savior. He is our king. He gets it. He understands. And he says, let me carry you through this. Don't walk in your own light. Seek me, my strength. On this journey of how do I get from here to there, from pain to victory, God is saying, don't walk in your own light. Seek me. Let me show you how to get there. Let me lead you there by the hand. 
And then verse 7, it says, Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will. And I know that I will not be put to shame. When adversity comes, and we're trying to get from the place of pain to the place of victory, we set our face on him. Let our face be set like stone towards him. Let us set our eyes on him. The sovereign God, almighty. Set your heart on following him and you will not be put to shame. Remember back to the last week of Jesus' life. They thought they were putting him to shame. His disciple, one of his disciples betrayed him. His own people put him on trial. They took him to the, one of the authorities of the Roman Empire and he was put on trial again. He was condemned and hung on a cross. What was considered just a, 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 a horrible way to die. What was considered, considered to be a shameful way to die. They thought they were putting Jesus to shame. But then three days later, there was the resurrection. Three days later, there was victory. Three days later, we see that there was no shame in what happened to Jesus. It was humility. It was love. It was grace. And then came him standing in victory. In verses 8 and 9 here, from Isaiah the prophet, it says, Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Oh, I skipped ahead. Let me skip ahead a little bit here. Verse 8, He who gives me justice is near. Who will dare bring charges against me now? Where are my accusers? Let them appear. And in verse 9, perhaps... The most profound words you need to hear today. See, the sovereign Lord is on my side. The sovereign Lord is on your side. If you remember nothing else when you leave here this morning, remember that the sovereign Lord is on your side. He who gives me justice is near. The sovereign Lord is on your side. Let that sink in for a minute. God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Everything that has been made was made through him. Sovereign God Almighty, who hung the the planets in the sky, who hung the stars in the sky, who created life on this earth, who brought about human beings capable of some pretty extraordinary things. That God. We think back on history. This is the God who led the the Israelite slaves out of slavery in Egypt. He parted the Red Sea. This is the God who brought Daniel, out of the lion's den, if you remember that story. The God who was using a prophet named Jonah when he was swallowed by this great fish. And he sent him to this land that that had been at war with Israel for a long time. He sent him there to proclaim grace and forgiveness for those people if they would turn to God. This is the God who became flesh and blood and dwelt among us, who turned water into wine at a wedding, who fed 5,000 with a couple of fish and a few loaves of bread. This is the God who raised Lazarus from the dead. This is the God who went to the cross for our sins, was dead and buried, and three days later, rose from the grave offering forgiveness in him 
That is the God who's on your side. That is the God who says, I am on your side. That's, that's amazing. That is amazing. We spend our lives trying to figure out how to get ourselves from where we are to where we want to be. And the truth is, we need to stop trying to do it on our own. And trust that God will meet us right where we are. And he will lead us to victory. All we have to do is follow him. So what does victory look like? I would say that victory is living a life of faith and hope and love, knowing that God will use us where we are and lead us through this maze we call life to an eternal home with him. That is victory. Our life has purpose and reason, and God is using us, and he desires to use us, and he will lead us through all the challenges we face. And he has indeed prepared an eternal home for us when this whole thing is over. That's victory. How do we get from here to there? We follow him. When we let go and stop walking in our own light and trust him, we can get through anything. We can get through anything. Isaiah 50 verse 9. See, the sovereign Lord is on your side. This year, I've, uh, I've set this goal that I'm trying to be more intentional about taking care of myself physically. And a friend of mine suggested I, I watch the show The Biggest Loser. And so my father-in-law, Donnie, and I have been watching older episodes of that show. And this week, I was watching an episode, and I came across... Uh, came across a very tragic story of somebody who was going from p leaving a world of pain and walking towards victory in Christ. Uh, it was a woman named Abby Reich, loyal, hardworking, lover of life. And in 2006, she faced the most unfathomable tragedy she lost her husband, her five-and-a-half-year-old daughter, and her two-and-a-half-week-old son in a car crash. I'm not sure I can think of anything more difficult. And yet, with God's grace, she has chose to forge ahead, to keep on living, to keep on going, to see how God would rebuild her life from the ruins she couldn't do that in her own light. But by setting her face, setting her eyes on God, following Him, one day at a time, one step each way, He was showing her a road ahead that He wasn't done with her yet. I have a little video clip of, of her we're going to watch. I am the third team. My husband and two children were involved. And I don't know who it is. So I did see this sweet, precious little thing named Joey Michaels come for me and say, You got me a treadmill and lay down. And I thought, Thank goodness. Because I am exhausted. That wasn't what she had in mind. She wanted me to lay down and grip underneath and hoist my body up 10 times. Like to remind you that I weighed 247 pounds and I was sweating profusely. Somehow I managed to do it. She decided she was going to see what I was really made of. She was going to stand on me. <laughs> and regardless of how hard I tried to hold on, my hand would slip and I would fall. I would grip again, and I would slip, and I would fall. Oh, and I was mad. Oh, because I am a perfectionist. Because I want to be strong, and I want to be the best at things, and I want people to think I'm great, and I'm doing a good job. 
and she made me fail. But then, in hindsight, I look back at it and I think, you know, for the first time since the wreck, I'm giving my all to something. And I all wasn't good enough that day, but that was the start. Because had I never started there with that failure, I would never be standing here today with you. And faith is one of those funny things that you think you have until you're really tested and then you have to figure out, do I really believe what I think I believe? And I can tell you after a lot of soul searching, yes I do. Yes, I do. And I don't say that in the Pollyanna. I don't say that in the Pollyanna, oh, let's pretend and put on a happy face that when times are tough. In the nitty gritty, in the midst of it, that is when you know your faith is real. Because it's really easy to have faith when your life is perfect. And I'm going to tell you, my life was perfect. I was one of those quirky couples that actually liked my husband. <laughs> we got along really, really well. We were best friends. We laughed at each other's jokes because we really thought they were funny. <laughs> we worked together, we played together, we prayed together, and it was good. And then I had this perfect, curly, red-headed, five-and-a-half-year-old baby girl who my students described as the only three-and-a-half-year-old that could quote world leaders while turning a cartwheel. <laughs> and she was a delightful, delightful child. And then we had Kayla, our nine-and-a-half-pound, blonde-haired, blue-eyed baby boy. And our family, in my opinion, was perfect. And in the blink of an eye, life as I knew it changed. And I have a choice to make. Do I really believe all the things that I thought I believed? And I do. I did then, and I do today. That doesn't lessen the hurt. It doesn't lessen the tears. It doesn't lessen the sorrow. But it gives me hope. And that hope is available to each and every one of you sitting here today. But man, our God says the opposite. He says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. The battle has been won. How empowering is that? That you can rest and know that the battle has already been won. Because whenever we rest in the arms of the one that won the battle, that is where we gain our strength. We're not victims. We're, vic we're victorious. Victors in this world. And know without a shadow of a doubt that even in the darkest hour, he is our ultimate hope. Even in your darkest hour, here's a hope, she said, and it kind of goes along with our scripture this morning. I see the sovereign Lord is on my side. The sovereign Lord is on your side. This it's a neat, a neat story, a tragic story. Uh, this woman, Abby, continues to share how she put her faith in God and he carried her through tragedy. She's been used to glorify God and help many other people. She's even gotten uh, married again as God has rebuilt her life. This same God who helped her is here for you and I. No matter what you're facing, 
He can lead you through it. I can't, verse 10. We're going to conclude by looking at verse 10 here in Isaiah 50. Verse 10 says, Who among you fears the Lord and obeys his servant? And this, this is the key part. If you are walking in darkness without a ray of light, trust in the Lord and rely on your God. If you are walking through this life without a ray of hope, trust in the Lord and rely on your God and he will give you strength and he will lead you through. We're going to sing one last song as we close this morning. I would just invite you, if you, if you need strength, if, God is, if you are trying to follow God but you're going through some difficult stuff, and you just want to come and you want to kneel at the altar and pray and seek his strength, by all means come. God is the source of our strength. He is on our side. Let's sing. Sovereign Lord, God Almighty, we are so thankful that you are on our side. Lord, it's so easy to want to just step out and walk in our own light, Lord. But Lord, we don't want to get ahead of you. We want to follow you, Lord. We know that we need to follow you. Our strength, our hope is found in you, Lord. Lord, would you lead us? Would you guide us? Would you give us strength and courage to face the challenges of this life? And may we follow you all the way until we see you with our own eyes. The sovereign Lord God is on our side. We praise you and thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. May the love of God and the grace of Jesus and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God bless you and enjoy your afternoon.